Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and last week I flipped past one of the pages, this portrait of Jesus, and I had a couple people ask, how did you do that? What was your technique for that? And I thought I'd try it again, and it didn't come out right. <laughs> it did not do very well at all, but I left it in my journal, and I'm going to show you the technique, even though it did not do what I wanted it to do, and I'll, I'll explain what Jesus taught me through that process. But first, let's flip through the last week of pages. I started with the continuation of that background behind the grapes. I cut out a triangle to make a pocket using some dimensional adhesive underneath two sides of it so I could have a pocket to tuck in my three tags, the way, the truth, and the life. And I have journaling on the backs of each one of those. Next up is an acrylic page. And this one I used John 1.1 1, 1 for both of them because it's listed twice in the devotional. So one of them focuses on Jesus being God. And I wrote, you have always been God because he was there at the moment of creation. The other one is about him being the word. And whatever the word was, it was probably not B, it's probably not in English, but he spoke things into existence. And it wasn't just the planet. It was everything. And I started writing down just all kinds of things that didn't exist before then. And he had to have created them. And it was just a different perspective on thinking about creation. Next up was hope. Jesus is my hope. And I had a bud in my flower vase that I've been wanting to paint since I brought it home from the grocery store the other day. And so I did, because for me, a bud that hasn't opened yet is a real symbol of hope because you know it's coming. You know that that scent is coming and the beautiful opening of the flower. Next up is the gate or the door, and I used a stamp from Art Impressions and used some watercolor markers to do this one. And the gate is where you pass through Jesus to get to the pasture, to relaxation, to provision, to all the things that you need. Next up was another acrylic page. And I painted, I, I'm, I'm not really great with acrylics, but what I did was paint the figures first, just blobby figures and blobby heads and blobby shapes. And then I added the bench on top of it because you can layer acrylics and it'll cover what's under it. So that seemed to be an easier way to handle it. Now my bench is crooked, but stay tuned because later on in this video, when I have the black paint out, I will fix the bench. In order to create the piece, I started by putting the picture onto a piece of this just regular computer paper with double stick on the back of it and then glued it down. And this double stick tape is super heavy. It's not like a glue stick that'll come undone either after time or if moisture hits it. And then I just painted right over it. This is what I did with the portrait of Jesus. And I figured I'd try something like that here. And it, I'll just tell you now, it goes off the rails relatively quickly because I was trying to make these two pages coordinate. You might have noticed that I kind of do that with this journal. I make both of the pages work together, either a continuation of a background or the colors or something, because I'm a graphic designer by training and that's just the way I do books. Hello, kitty. And then things started going off the rails because I was trying to use some of the same colors that were already in the picture and he started looking like the Incredible Hulk. And that was not a good thing but I was kind of down this road. So I kept trying and figuring, okay, I'll paint over it and do something else to it. And then maybe once I add some heavy black outlines, that might help, who knows? And I started painting the robe in blue. This is how I did the robe on the left. It's just to paint it in blue first. And then before it was completely dry, I painted the white so that I'd get some really pale blues and I would then have some dimension in the robe itself. But as I got to about this point, and it just seemed like everything I touched was making everything worse, I had that conversation with the Lord. And I don't know if any of you have ever had it, but I, I had that moment when I said, you know, I'm filming here. Why can't you make this work? Because I was recognizing how badly it was going, and I wasn't really seeing my way clear to how I was going to get out of it. I knew that I could keep trying to add more colors to different areas and then add the black outlines and maybe that would help. But I was a little miffed that here I was doing a page in this book. I couldn't just ignore the page. The only way to totally start all over again would be to just paint white over the whole thing and start from scratch. 
I tried making a brown, thinking maybe the hand needed to be more natural colors, since it wasn't as stylized as the portrait that I had done. So I mixed a red, a blue, and a yellow to make a brown. And it was kind of a yucky brown, but I thought, well, maybe this will help. Maybe once I get those black outlines in there and give it some contrast, then everything will be fine. But as I was doing this, I was um, talking to the Lord, and he said to lift my left hand. And when I did, I looked at the picture that I had painted just before that on the other page and realized that he was telling me that this was a moment for me to realize that he loves me even though I was doing a crazy weird job on this page. This was not why he loves me. The way that I paint is not his reason for caring about me. It's because he's a friend when I'm a sinner. He's a friend when I'm a screw up. He's a friend when I'm not doing what I should be or what I could be doing, or I'm still learning at something and I don't know what I'm doing. He's still with me. And it was almost like a revelation in that moment while I was sitting here painting this that, okay, he's going to love me whether I totally screw up this page or not. And I just kept thinking for a bit there, and it, it was a struggle to get through it, how embarrassed I was that this page didn't come out the way it was in my head. Now, some of you may have had that moment, because I know there's a lot of people that say, well, I can't draw, I can't paint, I can't whatever. And you have those moments when you think, gee whiz, I just wrecked a page, etc." when you're doing your Bible journaling. Well, that's not why he loves you. That's not why he loves me. Our journaling is our response to him. It's not his response to us. And doing it with creativity is just one way that we can respond to him. Plenty of people respond to him in other ways. They don't even do any art. So this is, this is a conversation to have with the Lord while we're doing our artwork. And if we don't end up creating something that we liked, if something doesn't work out, it doesn't mean we're a failure. It doesn't mean he's going to love us any less. He's still a friend of you and me, the sinners, which I found to be totally revelatory in this moment when I was doing this painting. And it wasn't like I don't know that. It's, it's something I just need to be reminded of more deeply. And I think for me, it also helps when he can point it out in the moment when I am feeling like a failure. And sometimes I'm not really listening to him when I'm feeling like a failure. I'm just in that woe is me moment as opposed to, you know, understanding what I'm doing. I don't think real deeply. I'm just knowing that things are a hot mess. And here in this particular instance, he was able to just show me right on the other page, right there in front of me. I had just spent time thinking about that verse and there I was faced with needing his love and his endurance of my painting skills <laughs> and I know that he loves it anyway he loves what I was doing he loves the heart that I've put into this and he's okay with it if it looks like I don't know what it looks like anymore it's maybe not a, a Hulk hand anymore but it still says what I want it to say because for this particular page, I chose the verse for sacrifice and he sacrificed for me. He, he bled for me. His hand was pierced for me. His feet were pierced for me. He made a sacrifice so that I could be saved and have eternal life. And that's what matters. Not how good or bad the painting is, but it's his sacrifice that makes all the difference. And so even though it's kind of embarrassing to see myself paint something that I was not particularly pleased with, I'm going with it anyway, because Jesus taught me something through it. And that is the important part, whether it's doing a journal like this or doing your Bible journaling. So there is my two cents worth. I will see you again next week. Feel free to join us in the Facebook group because I've been sharing these pages and a few thoughts with still pictures of them all week long. So I will continue doing that this week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.